name is Aaron, and I'm from Auto E Clinic. Today we have a 1997 Chrysler Sebring. We're going to show you how to remove the steering gear and repair the power steering leak in it. Working on or around automobiles can be dangerous. Make sure you have the proper tools, safe work environment, and necessary skill to perform these procedures. First, we want to begin by loosening the master cylinder and windshield washer fluid container from the firewall. Next, the battery cables are removed along with the battery retaining bracket. The battery must be removed along with the battery tray in order to gain access to the steering intermediate shaft. Once the battery was removed, we noticed how easily accessible the distributor cap was. Given the amount of mileage on the vehicle and after a visual inspection, it was determined replacement of the cap and rotor was necessary. Before disassembly, Mark your intermediate steering shaft and power steering gear housing. This will aid in the alignment process once the installation begins. Loosen and disconnect both power steering lines from the steering gear assembly. They will have to be removed before removal of the steering gear. Once both power steering lines and intermediate shaft are disconnected from the steering gear, we raise the vehicle and begin the removal process from underneath. First, we spray all exhaust attaching hardware with a rust penetrant. This will make it easier to drop the exhaust pipe. Since the exhaust pipe needs to be removed, the first step is to remove the O2 sensors from it. With the exhaust pipe out of the way, we can now drop the center cross member. There are two metal skid plates, one on the driver's side and one on the passenger side. They both must be removed next. Now, both wheels are removed to gain an easier access to the outer tie rod ends. Remove the cotter pin from the castle nut that retain the outer tie rod ends. Then loosen the nut, but do not completely remove it. Now give the steering knuckle a few light taps and the rod pops right out. There's also a special tool to use when the tie rod does not want to come out of the knuckle. Now remove the tie rod end. The anti-sway bar must be loosened from the subframe, but not completely removed in order to gain access of the steering gear retaining bolts. This is the steering rack. Notice the passenger side end is retained with a clamp bolted to the frame. The driver's side bolts directly to the subframe. Once those are removed, the gear can be dropped. It may take a little maneuvering before it completely drops out. It can be a little tricky. With the gear completely removed, you can see the worm gear housing and shaft. 
power steering fluid was leaking out of the upper housing seal. Loosen and remove the two fluid supply tubes from the housing, and then the two housing retaining bolts. We now remove the worm gear cap and the worm gear retaining nut. You may need to apply a little force to completely remove the housing. Once it's off, it's time to remove the bearing and seal. Use a punch to knock the seal and bearing out of the housing. You can use a socket the same diameter as the seal to drive it back into the housing seat. The seal kit not only came with the shaft seals, but also the internal square cut fluid seals as well. We remove the old ones with a small pick. Lightly tap the worm gear out. With the new seals installed, we place the worm gear into the freezer for about 20 minutes. This causes the seals to contract for an easier install, reducing the chance to cut one of these square cut seals. Also, we applied a small amount of trans assembly lube to aid in the installation as well. Now install the housing assembly back in, bolt it down, and screw in the fluid supply tubes. Next, we tighten the nut, but not too tight that it would damage the shaft. Then the worm gear cap is installed and tightened. Now that the seals have been replaced, the power steering gear is ready for installation. Once again, you may have to maneuver the gear around to get the retaining clamp and bolts to line back up. Reinstall the anti-sway bar clamps and insulators back to the subframe. Next, the skid plates can be bolted back up. Time for the exhaust to go back on. Check the exhaust flange gaskets to make sure they don't need replacing. Ours in this particular instance did not. Reinstall the O2 sensors. You may want to apply a little anti-seize to the threads for ease of removal if need be in the future. 
Next, the center cross member support can be bolted up. Install the outer tie rod ends into the knuckle, tighten and don't forget the cotter pins. These will keep the castle nut from backing off. Time for the power steering hoses to go back on. Make sure you hand tighten them first before you tighten them with a wrench. This way you won't cross thread them into the housing. Now align your marks up on the intermediate steering shaft. You can now put your battery tray and battery back in with the retaining bracket installed to keep everything in place. Now the battery cables go on. Now it's time to fill the system back up with power steering fluid. Bleeding procedures vary between manufacturers. In this particular instance, we start the engine and turn the wheels from lock to lock several times. This allows the fluid to work its way through the pump and back into the gear. We also leave the power steering cap off to allow the trapped air to escape out of the system. Thank you once again for viewing our video from Auto E Clinic. Replacing a steering gear assembly can be quite an extensive task. Always refer to your specific vehicle repair instructions and guidelines for any repair. All vehicle manufacturers have their own repair procedures for their own product. Our intent from this video is to give you a better knowledge of the diagnostic process and repair procedures. Repairs of this magnitude should mostly be left to professional of the automotive repair industry.